this video I'm going to look at points, which is insulated frog points and electro frog points, and go through electrical connections, and how they're wired up, and how they're going to be used on the layout. Um, first off, I'm going to talk about the difference uh, between Pico points. These are um, this particular one, electro frog point. And this is a Hornby insulated point. All Hornby points are insulated frog points. Initial difference is um, I have noticed that the Pico points seem to be much better put together, more solid. Um, there's no play in any of the movement. Um, the switch over action is very strong and positive. The spring is very strong in holding the, the rails against the outer rail. There's the Hornby point, and this isn't an old point, this is a, a relatively new one. Um, hasn't been used much. There's a bit of there's more play in the moving points. It's a bit sloppier. The action of the changeover is not so positive, and the spring doesn't hold the rails together as strong. So overall, I think build quality, the Pico is much better. It's also um, cheaper online and in my local shop, and also it's made in England, whereas the Hornby one is made in China. So I think overall, I would always now go for the Pico points and track rather than the Hornby track. So starting with the insulated frog point, this is the Hornby point. Pico do a similar, well I say similar, identical one in their um, set track range. So imagine it wired into um, the track. If we nominate this line as positive, then this track up here is positive, continuing through there, and the bottom rail is negative. So this line is negative, and so is this one. Now, set as it is currently, positive power will be fed into the line here and come through to here. So a train that runs through needs a positive power all the way through here, making this one a positive requirement. And if we switch the track over to main line running, top line stays positive here and now we have negative power required through here into here and this is where the problem arises now for normal trains they get their power through overhead lines electrified trains that is um, through the overhead power lines or from a third rail they don't run with power two different supplies on the track but obviously these model railways do this is where the problem arises because as you can see here we've got a negative power supply and a positive power supply and they would meet here where these two rails meet. Now the easiest solution to this problem is what you see here which is to have an insulated section here. This section is called the frog and on this point it's been made out of plastic that stops a short circuit occurring between this rail and this rail which are opposite polarities. Now in terms of electrical connectivity, clearly the top rail, this one, is one continuous piece, as is the bottom rail here. But for the other sections, power is fed through the moving rails. So, as you can see here, you've got a positive supply here, and power is picked up by this physical connection here, and then power runs along here, and underneath there's wiring which connects this rail to this rail. And I've got a continuity tester here, so we'll just show you, if I switch it off there, I can show you that this rail, you can hear the noise there, is connected to this one, but not this one. And this one is connected across there. So these two and these two via wiring underneath. These rails are dead. These two metal parts here are not connected to anything. Now what that means is, as it's set up at the moment, power is coming through these rails to allow through a train to travel through in either direction. So you are relying heavily on this contact here to transfer power into these rails. Obviously that requires good clean contact here and a nice positive action and that's better in the Pico points. Now for DC running what that means is that when you switch the track to mainline running like this you're not getting any power through to this track 
because this rail is no longer in contact here. And that's an advantage because you can park a locomotive in the siding here and then switch the point to main line and it's isolated and won't run while other, another train is running on this section here. Now clearly the big advantages of the insulated frog point is that you can use it straight out of the box for DC and DCC. You can use ordinary metal fish plates because this section here takes care of the short circuit and the rails here will control the power supply through. For DCC you would simply um, add power into this section here because it's recommended under DCC that all track, all areas of the layout are powered and what you can do there is just simply add a clip between this section of track here and this section down here to provide power to this siding or whatever section runs off here. The disadvantages of the insulated frog is that clearly you've got an element of plastic rail here which won't conduct power. Now for modern large locomotives that's not usually a problem because lots of them have uh, all wheel pickup. So if there's a wheel on this part of the track here that's not receiving power, there'll be a wheel further along or further back that will pick up power so you won't get problems. But for smaller locomotives and older ones that have limited pickup you can get stalling problems on here if power is lost. Another disadvantage is that you're relying heavily on power pickup in this area here. So if we switch it over to the siding, power to here is only coming from this contact here. So if it's poor contact here, then your supply here can be poor as well. For DCC running, I we recommend fitting these power clips between the rails that will keep the moving rail electrified all the time. And these go in here and they make sure that there's power between this rail and this rail and therefore fed into this rail. And then one the other side for the other rail. And they go in, if I can get it in, there you go, that one goes in there, and I can get it in, I want to go in, there we go. So that makes sure that these two rails via this one are fed from the outside and maintain good power supply to all the rails. Right, now this is the Pico Electro Frog Point. As you can see the frog here where the two rails move is electrified. Um, so that potentially has got a problem of a short circuit. Um, these work straight out of the box in DC or DCC, but you have to fit insulated rail joiners in here and here so that each connection to the frog is electrically isolated from the track. It's just the same as a metal rail joiner except if you can see in there it's plastic. So going back to our original wiring for the layout, We've got a positive supply here, so that runs all across this rail at the top here. We've got a negative supply here, and that continues along this rail into the siding. If I move across, you'll see in here, that's the positive line across the top here. So this track needs to be negative supply. This one a positive supply as it goes up and meets the top rail and as previously negative supply on the bottom and you can see here the problem we've got positive and negative supplies that would meet here at the electro frog so the insulated rail joiners are in there now this obviously gets over the problem of the plastic bit of rail so it gives better smoother running to locomotives as they go over the point it's particularly older ones and smaller ones You've got a problem is that the power supply here needs to switch depending on which way the points are set. And the way this is wired up is that the power is supplied from these rails here into this area. So in this position where we've got mainline running, it's going to receive negative supply from here, come into this rail and across to that connection there, and then wiring underneath into the frog. So the entire frog will be negative supply switch into the siding, we pick up positive supply here, 
comes down this rail and into the entire frog and because of the insulated joiners there's no issue with the power being switched backwards and forwards just go through with the continuity tester to show you the connections clearly these two rails are live this rail is connected just move that up a bit to all of them so every bit of rail is connected to everything else and these are also connected so this whole area in the middle is is connected together so whichever supply gets picked up from the rails here supplies the whole lot and that does create an issue which is that this rail and this rail because of the connection down here and now opposite polarity and there is potential for a short to occur if a wheel touches both these tracks at the same time the way this point the electro frog point works you've got the same disadvantages of the insulated frog point in that the connection here must be good and strong otherwise you get poor connectivity in the frog area down here. What I'm going to do with my electro frog points and what a lot of other people do is to have the frog power fed by a point motor so that when the point switches rather than rely on this section for power it's going to be fed directly to the frog area by the point motor. As you can see here where these rails meet here there's a tiny tiny gap but there's actually underneath an area of wiring. What you need to do if you're going to feed the frog from the point motor or the switch is to cut these wires. That will then mean that this section here from here onwards through here is electrically isolated and you can feed that from the switch. In fact Pico put this wire in which is connected to the frog to allow that to be easily done. And then these rails are then only being fed from the side rails, depending on which one is being switched over. And in the same way we use those power clips on the Hornby point, we can actually connect a wire across here, solder a wire across there, to make a good permanent connection between the outer rails and the moving rail. I hope this video has cleared up any questions you may have about electro frog points and insulated frog points. If you've got any queries, just leave them below.